Hello and welcome to the Watch Kaki channel where we bring you all the good and honest watch reviews. If you haven't done so, please, I'd like to remind you, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my videos, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button because I need all the support I can get from you. I've got new videos uploaded every week just for you. In today's video, we're going to review this Skirfa Diver 1 here. And this watch is on loan from my good buddy, Bus. Alright, so Bus, he bought this watch about two weeks back and you know, he has very generously, uh, you know, just loaning the watch to me for me to film this video. And I really must thank my buddies, people like him who are so generous and you know, so willing to give and share that uh, has kept this channel going. So a bit more background information on Skirfa. All right, so this brand here I mentioned in the unboxing video, uh, it is, you know, started by Paul Skirfield. All right, who is a professional diver himself. All right, so incidentally, one of the viewers on my channel, all right, actually reminded me that Skirfa is also a British brand, as opposed to many micro brands that have been coming out of Asia. All right, China, Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, and US, of course. All right, so. This one here is a bit unusual, comes from UK. And as you can see, the prices listed on the Skirfa website, they're all in sterling pound. So I'd like to remind you that the Skirfa Diver 1 watch here, it is designed by a diver and it is probably intended to be worn by divers, all right? Because this one here really uh, withstands all, you know, the conditions. It's got a really good depth rating. This one here is good to 500 meters water resistance, it's got a helium escape valve here and I would say this is a true blue diver as opposed to the fashion style kind of diver or you know, diver inspired style kind of watches. So the diver one here is the first model to come out of Skirfa and this one here like I mentioned is a 500 meters you know a real scuba diver kind of watch and this one here has quartz movement it is powered by a Ronda 715 movement uh, this one here does have a date complication and it's also got a really nice screwing crown here okay the screwing and unscrewing action here feels really good and i'm going to zoom in here to show you that the gasket the stem here everything feels very solid you know different from a lot of micro brands out there where most of the emphasis has been placed on design. This one here, you really feel that, uh, you know, there's great emphasis on the functionality, on crown, on waterproofing and all that. And the Diver 1 is a really reasonably priced watch here at 205 British pounds. So you do the conversion and that's the price without the VAT, 205 sterling pounds. All right, so it ships on a rubber strap here and feels really good, feels really nice. Not too sure if it's FKM or if it's natural rubber, okay? Has no taper here. So my buddy also, you know, paid a bit extra. I think he paid about 45 or 46 pounds for this bracelet here. Okay, so this is an add-on. All right, really nice, fully milled, solid bracelet. And I'd like to show you this one here. I find this is pretty, cool all right even the spring bars here all right Skirfa they have you know included like pretty solid looking spring bars not the cheapo looking type and I must uh, give them credit for being so meticulous in their design but for me I think the diver one should live in its rubber strap because I think this is the best look and best combination out there for a diver, all right, it looks best on this rubber strap. So for most of this review, we're going to see the diver one, you know, wearing this rubber strap here. So I have zoomed in the lens a little bit as I run you through the specs of the diver one here. It's got a case size of 40.5 millimeters. I know uh, 40 millimeter is the official uh, measurement given on the website, but I measured using my calipers, 40.5 millimeters. So if you include the crown here, it measures out at 44 millimeters. So the thickness of the watch here from the base of the nicely engraved case back to the top of the dome sapphire crystal is 14.2. Again, it comes in less than the official specs. Luck width for the Diver 1 is 20 millimeters. So together with all the 
drilled through lugs here uh, really makes strap changing a breeze rubber NATO bracelet whatever you like I think it's going to be very easy for you to change straps lug to lug distance here is a little bit on the longer side of things I measured it to be about 48 millimeters and the bezel here is actually same size as the case so no flare outs or anything like that same size as the case 40.5 millimeter bezel size and crystal size is 30.8 millimeters crown size here is about 6.9 millimeters so i think official specs you know they've listed this to be seven millimeters not much of a difference but i must tell you that the engraving here is pretty cool all right it's engraved with d1 here all right really nicely done d1 i would assume that stands for diver one and lastly the diver one weighs in at about 98 grams on its rubber strap so if you put on the stainless steel bracelet uh, it comes in at about 155 grams so this is after sizing the bracelet to about uh, six and three quarter inches so now let's spend some time to talk about the case design and build quality of the Scarfa Diver 1 so this one here has got an all brush 316L stainless steel construction so also mentioned in my unboxing video the Diver 1 does have a very traditional <laughs> design okay uh, still very basic design okay no no chamfers no strange looking uh, cut-ins or anything like that sort of a bread and butter kind of a diver style look here okay so crown guards nothing fantastic to bits of metal here uh, helium escape valve here is pretty cool at the nine o'clock position all right so it's also got this aluminum bezel insert i think other versions would have uh, different colors so the yellow dial version you know comes on a stainless steel and the black and blue i think they have matching bezel inserts and this sort of a coin edge here is pretty cool right, it offers a lot of grip on the bezel which is a 120 click bezel and the clicks here they feel you know very sick very solid and overall I think uh, it's just a very solidly built watch you know upon close inspection I feel that uh, they've also uh, done a really good job on the insides on the underside of the lux here okay so no sharp edges all right in fact even the tips here they don't feel sharp at all okay so it's the same for the bracelet let me just you know bring in the bracelet to show you all right on the underside and the inside you know none of that sharp edge and you really feel that they've paid enough attention to make sure that you know the wearer's comfort is taken care of so really a good job by Skirfa and now let's move on to the dial design again um, even the dial layout here is very traditional all right uh, conservative I would say nothing will go wrong with this type of layout very traditional you know no frills kind of layout with block markers everything here is printed from the logo to the text here at Diver 1 I really like the fonts here Okay, the Diver 1 font here, I think they're pretty cool. And this watch here has no chapter ring, but the minute markers are printed on the same flat layer as the dial. It does have a rehaul here. And I would say, you know, it fits the overall color and theme of the watch very well. As for the handset, again, I would say, you can't go wrong with the broadsword, all right? Broadsword and a little loom dot here, somewhere in the near the middle of the second hand I think you know these are very safe kind of design you won't go wrong I'm especially loving the black frame or borders of the hands here okay so for orange for lighter colors like yellow here I think if you use a black border it looks really good so if you use a silver one I think it may affect uh, the legibility of the hands and so I am very glad they've used black here, even for the markers, the frames of the markers here, right, which are printed. Now the one thing I don't get though with this watch, it's this dome sapphire crystal, okay. Alright, so uh, I assure you it is uh, well made, okay, it's a sapphire crystal, high dome, pretty high dome. And you can see that there's a blue ER coating here, yeah, you can see from the reflection on yeah that bounce off the the surface of the crystal 
there is ER coding and all that, but I don't get it. Why do you want to put a dome crystal, a single dome too? So that gives off a really bad uh, distortion. So I think you can only read the watch at certain angles. So limited visibility. Okay, so with other watches, I think you get a much better visibility. So let me just put the Samurai. Okay, so another very popular diver. Okay, so you can see, right? Let's do a comparison. Okay, so at this kind of angle, you can still read the time very well, but just take a look at the scurf here. Yeah? <laughs> you see nothing. So I really don't understand why uh, some brands like to use single dome, high dome crystals. So there could be a reason. Uh, maybe uh, when you're like uh, 100 feet underwater, I think, you know, diving deep for pearls and jewels, I think the distortion may help. I have no idea because I don't do any diving. So uh, please leave a comment in the comment section if you know uh, the theory or the idea behind putting this dome crystal that gives off such a weird distortion. I've just charged up the loom using my UV torch. I'm gonna switch off the lights now. Let's check out the loom on the Skirfa Diver 1. All right, boom, just take a look. This one here glows really bright. All right, nice bluish looking loom here. Let's just bring in the Samurai here for a comparison. You can see in terms of loom brightness, the Skirfa Diver 1 is definitely no slouch, all right? I think it's giving a good fight to the Seiko Samurai, which is widely regarded as the king of loom. Now let's just zoom out and take a look at the wrist shot of the Diver 1. My wrist is about 17 cm. At 40 millimeters, I think a diver like this, it will fit all wrist sizes. The only concern here is that the watch here does sit a little bit tall uh, because of the slightly taller case back. And the mid case here does have minimal curve to it. So it's almost like a straight uh, mid case. A bit like the Tudor Black Bay kind of style where there's hardly any curve to it. So it does look like there's a bit of a luck overhang, but being a 40 millimeters case size, I don't think it's a problem at all in terms of wearability. And let's also do a size comparison between the Skirfa Diver 1 and Seiko Samurai, all right? Uh, I always like to do such comparisons and you can see at one glance, you know, the Seiko is the much bigger watch big watch overall in terms of case size uh, but in terms of thickness they are about the same all right in fact the skirfa is a little bit thicker all right but you wouldn't think so because it's got a really slim mid case all right but due to the high dome crystal and that tall case back there so uh, it is actually thicker in terms of luck to luck though i think they are about the same and here's a bonus shot of the Diver 1 on his bracelet. My buddy is a big fan of the bracelet, so I have to reinstall it for him before I return him the watch. So I think, you know, bracelet here is also very good looking, but I would very much prefer the Diver 1 on its rubber strap. So a quick look on the clasp system here. So everything is fully milled, all right? None of the cheaper uh, stem clasp or anything like that. So it does lack uh, diverse extension so again I'm assuming the diver one was meant to be worn on its rubber strap <laughs> so there you have it that was my full review of the Skirfa diver one I would say this is a very high spec a very technical watch uh, intended for its true purpose which is to dive and you know with things like helium escape valve uh, it's also got a quartz movement I think you know these things are just great for grab and go uh, minimal servicing or uh, fears of magnetism and all that so I would say this is a true blue toolish kind of diver uh, you know it comes in many different colorways as well so yellow being the bright and playful one so overall just very good looking but I'm not a big fan of the dome crystal so I think this brand here Skirfa it doesn't uh, have much attention doesn't get very much attention here in Singapore and uh, that's because most people, you know, uh, with this type of price and all that, they would rather go for Seiko's, Orient's or anything like that. You know, if you're looking for a more technical, more professional spec diver, quartz diver, I think 
you could be interested in the Skirfa Diver 1, all right? So this is the watch Kaki from Singapore. We've got George and Pixie with us today. So a uh, bunch of watch enthusiasts. So I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.